Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to Poverty and Wars in Africa for Negroes, Part 3. Remember, then it was chattel slavery, now it is wage slavery. For that which was the essence of chattel slavery is the essence of wage slavery. It is only a difference in form, Hubert Harrison. And this is from the book The Negro and the Nation, published 1917. And from William Whedon, the 17th century organized the new western countries and created an immense opportunity for labor. The 18th coolly and deliberately set Europe at the task of depopulating whole districts of western Africa and of transporting the captives by a necessarily brutal, vicious and horrible traffic to the new civilizations of America. And this is from the book, Economic and Social History of New England, 1620 to 1789, published 1890. And here is a shout out to our donors and Patreon subscribers and members of the channel. Remember you too can support us by going to paypal.me forward slash our renaissance or patreon.com forward slash our renaissance. Thank you for your support and please remember that we do not announce them often so you do not think that if you don't hear us talking about it, it means we do not appreciate it. We appreciate every support including the fact that you are viewing our videos. Thank you very much. Time to think. When the slave master Savior said, Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, as coded in Matthew 10, 34-35. Do you take time to ask yourself what it means? Do you know that this violates the Ten Commandments? When you see people become born again in a place like Nigeria and in southern Nigeria to be precise and separate from their family and their mother and father that trained and took care of them from childhood to adult years, what does that tell you? What do you think? What will you call yourself if after seeing families divided by the slave master's savior and you are still calling it to foster unity in your own family? You see pastors with broken homes and marriages, but still calling the slave master savior to save your own marriage. What does that say about you? And on a side note, you will permit us to use somebody like Olusegun Basanjo, a house negro of the worst type, to prove that foolish people also grow old. And please do not consider this an insult because it's going to be based on facts. Not in this video, but in a subsequent video. And we shall use Professor Charles Soludo, a house negro as well, to prove that education or professorship does not mean wisdom or intelligence, but simply that the person is a good learner. An observation. When you hear the slave hunting terror group that became Nigerian army in 1863, calling the slaves by their code, bloody civilians, do you not wonder why they do not call Europeans or Arabs bloody civilians even when they are not in the army? And so why do they call fellow Nigerians or fellow blacks bloody civilians but not the Fulani Arab or European slave traders? Do you know why? If you do, please put it in the comment section. And in the event you don't understand what we mean exactly, look at people like Obasanja for example, when they visit the slave masters, you will see them in their military uniforms. Those people are usually civilians, not even with any prior military experience in some cases, but still they see them as their masters. But when they come to black people, they will see them as bloody civilians, apparently because of how they were trained to see the Negroes as slaves. So ideally, bloody civilians is just the code for slaves. That's what it will mean. And you can also see Yakubu Gowon, who was their lucky during the genocide in Biafra with the British Prime Minister that masterminded the starvation in Biafra. Sometimes you hear some mentally enslaved Negroes in Biafra telling you it could have been Awolowo. Now ask yourself, does Awolowo have the capacity to do that? The answer is no. Sometimes they will try to suggest how he could have been the one that suggested it. But remember to ask yourself, if he had also told them to cease fire or stop shooting at their so-called siblings, would they have listened? The answer is no. The starvation was masterminded by the British, 
who imposed an air, land, and sea blockade over Biafra. That was why they called the starvation the Harold Wilson syndrome. And the BBC was telling the world that the crops failed and there was famine and there was drought. That was why the crops failed. So if the British were not behind it, why were they lying about it? There you see how lies expose the slave master for the hypocrite he is. But again, back to what we were saying, you see that go on will not see Harold Wilson as a bloody civilian but will see his fellow black people as bloody civilians because of the training they go through as members of the slave hunting terror group now called Nigerian Army. And this should help us understand why it was the slave hunting terror group now called Nigerian Army that declared the indigenous people of Biafra IPOB a terrorist group in a sham democracy. Now take note of what we are going to tell you. Remember Charles Soludo is either from a lineage of saboteurs or a saboteur himself you will notice that all the governors will no longer be mentioning biafra they will always be mentioning ipob that's because they have been commanded not to this will help you understand that the governors are actually slaves they are not there on their own but leaving that aside for now time to think do you see some mentally enslaved negroes go to church to cast and bind and blame their ancestors for their suffering did you also know that when they do such, their ancestors include people like Namdekano today, Otmego Jugo, Equiano Loda, Otoba Kugwano, Patrice Rumumba, Stephen Biko of South Africa, Nelson Mandela, Robert Mugabe, among others who campaigned against the slave trade or oppression in Guinea. Negro land or what you call Africa today, some of whom were killed. Remember at that time it was a capital offense to condemn the slave trade. The same way you see them not allowing anybody to talk about Biafra today, that was exactly how it was. Remember when people like Den Calloway or people like Nelly of Febu tried to deceive you that it could have been the people selling themselves. Tomorrow they will also tell you it is the same people that massacred and starved and killed themselves during this genocide in Biafra or that they chose to remain in one Nigeria. But leaving that aside, imagine what it looks like that the children you are laboring and suffering for today will in the future be binding and casting your spirit as the cause of all their problems while at the same time calling on the slave masters, dead ancestors to come to their rescue unfortunately. So you see how Namdekano is suffering today for the freedom of all. A lot of people before him had suffered the same way. That's why he said that it is the toughest job on earth, freedom of Biafra, which we put as freedom of Negroes because it goes beyond Biafra. And in the event you are wondering why we do not mention people like Wazrike or Asari here, that's because those are compromised. They are no longer in the struggle. They are actually against Biafra today as a stance. And permit us again to ask, if the church or mosque were good and had any powers, do you think the Europeans and Arabs could have given them to the Negroes? And please never forget what we always tell you that Biafra and Ambazonia will expose the fact that Christianity and Islam are mere golden calves and the slave master and his slave hunting accomplices will also expose themselves as the culprits behind the brutal transatlantic and trans-Sahara slave trades. And so, comparatively, do you mean to tell us that the same people that have not allowed us freedom here on earth, in Biafra and Ambazonia, and even in the middle belt of Nigeria and elsewhere around the world, wherever you have the Negroes, today would allow the Negroes share the same heaven with them if it existed? You are telling us that somebody who has not allowed you to even tell him or her your problems, be it in Biafra or Ambazonia, Remember the cause of all these problems is just that Namdekano is asking for roads and schools to be built if we look at it in a nutshell. And you are telling us that the same people that will collect money from the Negroes, steal their resources and kill them when they ask for little things to keep the life in them including food could have given them Islam or Christianity if they led to anywhere better than here. If you tell us that, please put it in the comment section to explain to us how you think that is possible. That's ideally, you are telling us that the Fulani in Nigeria and Cameroon, that's West and Central Africa, and their chief sponsor, England and the British, could have given these golden cows to the Negroes in Biafra and in Ambazonia if they would have given them freedom. 
if you think that was possible then please put it in the comment section and tell us why you think so so ideally you mean the same people that facilitated the kidnap or abduction of Namdekano and the jailing of Julius Sikwa Yoktabi could have given them Jesus or Allah to save them from their oppression. It's impossible. It doesn't matter how you see it. At least, like we told you, Biafra and Ambazonia will expose the slave master and his slave hunting accomplices as the culprits responsible for the brutal transatlantic and trans-Sahara slave trades. So have you taken time to think this through or you believe it for the sake of it? That an European or an Arab has to teach the Negroes how to relate with their creator. Remember, the mere fact that these golden caps of Christianity and Islam were imposed on the Negroes with terror, violence and bloodshed is enough proof that they couldn't have been true. It doesn't matter how you see what we're saying. All you need to do is to research how they brought it. If you ever thought that it was done by preaching, as in you go and preach to people and they start following you and start coming to church, come and tell us how many people you have been able to convert since you came to Europe and Americas and you opened the church. And let us know how many of them are people that came from Africa and how many of the slave master's children you were able or have been able to convert to Christianity the shameful path if you attend church or mosque of the slave traders did you hear about Biafra and Abazonia if yes can you say those killing their so-called fellow Africans are sensible humans and are their siblings so ideally if you think we are all Nigerians or all Africans please put it in the comment section to tell us how you consider somebody who murdered your parents made you an orphan or a widow or a widower as your brother so ideally you are telling us that those murdered by people like Gowan and Obasanjo should also see them as good people that are also their rulers if we looked at it in that sense and so if your church or mosque makes you brothers or siblings with the Europeans and Arabs compare how the Europeans went to support their real brothers in Ukraine in a make-believe war and how you are unashamedly killing your own brothers and siblings in Biafra and Ambazonia and in the Middle Belt and ask yourself who is the fool here and here is our little example the Church of England condemning a make-believe war in Ukraine if you are indeed a sensible human being show us where the church condemned the killings in Biafra and Ambazonia and the Middle Belt of Nigeria that's our challenge to you at least before you attend church the next week or mosque show us where the muslims or mosques condemned the killings in biafra and ambazonia and the middle belt of nigeria if this does not tell us that both mohammedanism and christianity are the mental portion of the slave trade what else do we need to know that so clearly we see here church of england attack on ukraine an act of great evil statement from archbishops of canterbury and york now we ask you all the years you have shouted from the middle belt of Nigeria to Biafra and Ambazonia, did they issue a statement? The answer is no. So before you go to church, ask yourself, how come they did not find any time to condemn the killings that were going on in the middle belt of Nigeria, in Biafra and in Ambazonia till today? But then, the Ukraine that started a few days or a few months ago, they have already started condemning it. And never forget, what you are seeing in the media about how many people that have been killed, they are not true. It doesn't matter whether you believe us or not. A little thing to ask yourself was when those that claimed they wanted to go and fight for Ukraine in, against Russia were told to pay that amount for the visa fee, what does that tell you? That's because they know that the Nigerian army were just slave hunters. They lack humanity and common sense. So they don't want them to come with their foolishness to kill their own siblings. They don't want their siblings touched. Those things you are seeing on TV are not true. The slave master cannot kill themselves that way. And above all, remember that when Nigeria invaded Biafra, the British imposed an airland and sea over Biafra and ordered their slave hunting accomplices, supplied them weapons to be killing innocent women and children. But today, the same British, as you can see, are calling for charity to help Ukraine. What does that tell you? That should make you to begin to think. It is how you treat your siblings that others will treat them. And you remember the case of Adeinka Granson? If he has been jailed, 
Never forget that the slave master's judicial system is based on the slave trade and all they may have been doing is so that tomorrow they can even jail in Nandukano and tell you didn't you see how they jailed at the Inca but always bear in mind the hypocrisy of the slave master is so visible and tangible that the blind can see it and the deaf can hear it. So you see this statement from the Archbishops of Canterbury and York 24th February 2022 and it says they have condemned the Russian attack on Ukraine as an act of great evil. Always bear in mind that the British has never apologized for either the genocide in Biafra or the slave trade. And we are by this challenging you to show us any mass killing in West and Central Africa by the descendants of the slave hunters that the British condemned or that their BBC reported accurately. And he goes on further to say, they are urging Christians to make this Sunday a special day of prayer for Ukraine, Russia and for peace. Now we ask you, haven't we been shouting and crying for peace in West and Central Africa, in Southern Nigeria, in Biafra and in Ambazonia for years? Did you hear them issue any statement? The answer is no. And the reason they do it is because on Sunday you will still go to their churches and be worshipping their golden calves of Christianity and on Friday to their golden calf of Islam. And further here, we see Vatican laments tragic invasion of Ukraine by Russia. Now we ask you, didn't all these people hear about our cries in Biafra, in Ambazonia, and in the middle belt of Nigeria? Didn't they hear when Dr. Mailafia talked about what they plan to do? Didn't they hear all the killings that were going on? Shouldn't you be asking yourself why they did not condemn them? And further here, we see the fake news BBC reporting that Ukraine conflict UK charity appeal donations pass 100 million pounds. Now ask yourself, is there any day they have come to make donations and call for people to be helped in Western Central Africa? If your answer is no, that's the time for you to start thinking and start using your brains. The slave master is a subtle beast. You see how he got all his media houses not to report on them and you see gradually the fake news BBC Igbo is now the one reporting on Enan the Kano. That's how they play their game. We want you to compare their trick with that of Nelly of Ebo and how she came up with how and who betrayed Enan the Kano. And suddenly she's talking about it do. We will show you what games they are playing in this video. And on a side note, we just want to tell you boldly and clearly that Simon Eba is not fighting for any freedom or Biafra, but actually working for the slave master and his accomplices to destroy the indigenous people of Biafra and the Biafra struggle. So he's working to destroy IPOB. And remember, if you are one of those supporting him, one thing we want to ask you is this. When he tells you that people have eaten money, people have spent money, have you wondered how he knew? And above all, you may have forgotten that a lot of people whose parents, breadwinners have been murdered in the fight for freedom in Biafra are being taken care of by IPOB. So if he is encouraging you to stop paying your dues to them, how will those people be taken care of? Remember, that's how you know that he is lying. If he had factored in all those ones and told you how the money was going, then you will know they could be saying the truth. But as we told you, he is lying against the IPOB leadership and they are now working towards that too. We will show you the little trick they are playing. Remember to compare how Nelly of Ebu started telling you who betrayed him and the Kano. And always remember to ask yourself, somebody that caught a thief at night, what was he or she doing? How did Nelly of Ebu know who betrayed Nam the Kano, knew where the meetings were held, know how he was kidnapped? And suddenly, she is now telling you about Idu and telling you that Biafra is a scam, Biafra is a slave name and all that. Remember what she was doing when she was telling you all those stories was to get your attention, to buy your confidence so that you think she's saying the truth. But like we told you, their lies will expose them. Her lies exposes Simon Eber. And you may remember her blame the Negro strategy of talking about atonement for slavery. I'm blaming the name Biafra. Let us show you that she is lying before we show you why the slave master is actually against that name. And never forget that anything they come with and add spirit to it. Spirit told them, spirit did the spirit didn't do, know that they are lying. Everybody knows that to deceive the Negroes, just use spirit or God. So that's why they are coming with spirit or God. Observe that Nelly and her Idu nonsense are just quoting every line of what Namdekano said because they are trying to deceive you. They think it is why you are following Namdekano without knowing that there are a lot of things about Kano, including the fact that he tells people the truth 
ask yourself, has Nelly told you about what needs to be done in Biafra land? Has she talked about how the ports need to be opened? Has she talked about anything good other than telling you that the reason the slave master and his accomplices were killing people is because of the name Biafra? And so to show you that she is lying against the people by claiming that they could have been the ones that sold themselves, and this is the same lie you hear from people like Den Calloway and people like Kurumeo Ahao, Professor Getz, the real Makaba, among others who claim that it could have been people selling others. Remember, the slave master gives them the lie to tell and to sell. But the easiest way to debunk their lies is to look at the records in history and study them yourself. That way, no matter what they say, at least you will be able to ask them, show us where you are getting this thing. And the moment you ask them that question, they will never have an answer for you. And so we reference economic and social history of New England 1620 to 1789 by William B. Whedon in two volumes, volume 2, and it was published 1890. Here we see that the African slave trade, that the deportation of African Negroes, commonly called the slave trade, was a movement of importance in the commerce of the later part of the 17th and of the 18th century. Perhaps the most momentous and effective change instituted in the minds of men by this 19th century is in the general conception and treatment of human slavery. The 17th century organized the new western countries and created an immense opportunity for labor. The 18th coolly and deliberately set Europe at the task of depopulating whole districts of western Africa and of transporting the captives by a necessarily brutal, vicious and horrible traffic to the new civilizations of America. And so if you are educated, this is enough to tell you that Nelly Ofewe is lying and she is working for the slave master and his accomplices. Now don't get us wrong, the slave master did the slave trade himself, he knows he did, so why is he lying about it? And to further show that Nelly Ofewe is lying and for Simon Ipa not to be debunking her lies means that he is in on the lies. We will see where Nelly claimed that the people could have sold themselves. Now remember, if you are an adult that believe that nonsense, our question to you is, how can somebody come and sell you and your wife today if you will not agree to follow them? So why do you believe that your forebears could have been that stupid? Remember at that time, the slave master sold that lie claiming that the Negroes were not human, that they were like cattle. So if you are believing the idiocy today, then tell us how somebody can sell you because you are no different from your forebears. So we see here where the liar Nelly of Febu wrote, Biafroha, come and see them. Biafra is Biafroha. Biafra is a slave name meant to kill and exterminate us. Our people who sold their own will tie and hide them in different locations. Remember, this is the mindset of an ant, thinking that it was about one person. And she goes on to write, when the white dealers are ready to see the consignment, the slave catchers will tell them to come and see them. Biafra, this is a subtle way of trying to tell you that the slave catchers could have been Igbos. Now ask yourself, an Igbo that is living in the hinterland where the British could not come in at that time is the one that will be calling the British and speaking to them in Igbo to come and see the slaves. The white slave dealers will now go and see the consignment slave. Hence, the white men called the sellers Biafra, since they can't pronounce the whole words Biafra, hence the bite of Biafra, the pot of slavery. Now remember, this lie was concocted by a supposedly PhD holder, which is very shameful. We are going to show you what they are running away from in that name shortly. But then, let us debunk this ludicrous lie. But before we do so, we see where she writes, Idu is our real name. Idu is the truth about us. The truth and only the truth can make us free. Idu is the only ticket to our freedom. Idu is the only key to our freedom. A stitch in time saves nine. Remember, she is paid to write all this garbage. Otherwise, ask her, okay, where did you get this idu from? If you ask her, she will say a spirit told her. If you ask them to show you historical record, they'll go and show you a signboard that was recently created in one place in Anambra State and say that is their evidence that he do existed as a 10 BC, which is unfortunate. But like we told you, the slave master is a subtle beast. And to debunk this ludicrous lie, let us reference some historical account of Guinea its situation, produce and the general disposition of the inhabitants with an inquiry into the rise and progress of the slave trade, its nature and lamentable effects. Also 
a republication of the sentiments of several authors of note on this interesting subject, particularly an extract of a treatise by Granville Sharp, and this was by Anthony Benezet and published in 1771, that is 250 years ago. So that's what we're talking about here. This book was published 250 years ago so that we show you that Nelly Ophibu is lying and she was contracted by the slave master and his accomplices. If you remember their atonement project, they have a Fulani in their midst that is teleguiding and using them to propagate those lies. And it tells us here about the year 1749, I sailed from Liverpool to the coast of Guinea some time after our arrival. I was ordered to go up the country a considerable distance upon having notice from one of the Negro kings that he had a parcel of slaves to dispose of. I received my instructions and went carrying with me an account of such goods we had on board to exchange for the slaves we intended to purchase. Upon being introduced, I presented him with a small case of English spirits, a gun, and some trifles which having accepted and understood by an interpreter what goods we had the next day was appointed for viewing the slaves we found about 200 confined in one space remember Nelly was telling us the Thai one person so the slave master will walk around the whole village freely we had their tied one person here and there to gather 500 to 1000 people that will fill a slave ship so take note of that and that debunks the lie of Nelly of Fable, but we leave that apart and he goes on to write, but here how shall I relate the affecting sight I there beheld, how can I sufficiently describe the silent sorrow which appears in the countenance of the afflicted father and the painful anguish of the tender mother, expecting to be forever separated from their tender offspring, the distressed maid wringing her hands in presage of her future wretchedness and the general cry of the innocent from a fearful apprehension of the perpetual slavery to which they were doomed. Under a sense of my offense to God, in the person of his creatures, I acknowledge I purchased eleven, who I conducted tied two and two to the ship, being but a small vessel, ninety ton. We soon purchased our cargo, consisting of 170 slaves, but you can pause the video and read the entire thing yourself. But our question to you is, how can you keep 200 people in a place without military might? The Negroes did not have any military force. That was why they were able to capture them. So it was the Nigerian army today. How then did Nelly of Febu get that it was people that tied people here and there that could have given them 300 to 1,000 people, women and children, including nursing mothers, to fill one slave ship? So at least you see here that the man bought 170 slaves. Now ask Nelly to explain how the same people could have been the ones that captured 170 of their own from a community of perhaps less than that number. But we leave that apart for now. At least this should help you know that Simon Eba is working for the slave master and we have seen where he is going. Remember before now, we were supporting him because we thought he was genuine until he issued his response in defense of Nelly and how what he is saying will overshadow the lies of Nelly and above all whether it could have been the spirit that told Nelly to disparage Biafra ridicule Nam the Kano as a way to free him you can see that there is no way he can be fighting for Biafra and there is no way he can be fighting for Nam the Kano and in the event you are still in doubt that Simon Eba and Nelly of Febu are working for the slave master and his accomplices, the simple fact that they are quarreling with the name Biafra, not with their freedom, not with opening ports in Biafra land, not with the military withdrawing from Biafra land, even if you had it from Simon Eba, he is just saying it for the sake of it. The slave hunters have never withdrawn before, including during the war, the slave master Harold Wilson insisted that the bombing must continue, the starvation must continue until Biafra is subdued and annexed by Nigeria. So when you see the hypocrisy of talking about Ukraine today, use your common sense. The people that are deceiving you are the same people that say you are not human. And so to show you why they are quarreling with the name Biafra, we reference the map of Africa by treaty by the late Sir E. Hartlett. And this is third edition, volume 1, number 1 to 94. British Colonies, Protectorates and Possessions in Africa, published 1909. 
here we see that and this was 113 years ago so that when they are telling you Ojuku created Biafra you have to understand that they are liars their lies will always give them away so he tells us here that island of Bulama on the 24th June 1827 a treaty was concluded between Great Britain and the King of Biafra which contained the following article ceding the island of Bulama with the adjacent islands to Great Britain so that is why they are using Nelly and Simon to look for a way to change to do and destroy IPOB so you can see that they signed a treaty with Biafra here if you were to show this to the so-called autopilots who unashamedly forget that if you say you're autopilot it means you don't have a leader but they turn around and tell you that the Namdekano is their leader now understand why we told you that the descendants of the slave hunters they lack humanity and they lack common sense anything they are saying if you apply common sense to it it will collapse so if you were to show them this they are going to tell you or ask you who is the king of Biafra but then later they will go and read this but it won't still change them but they will ask you that question just to put you off if you are to ask people like Nelly she will start insulting you because that's their technique to prevent you from exposing them to ridicule and here is a UK government's message on Iran and it says Ukraine what you can do to help remember this is the same people that when nigeria invaded biafra they imposed an air land and sea blockade over biafra and starved the children you need to bear this in mind their bbc up till tomorrow morning does not report on biafra at the international level but you see they are telling you this because they still believe that the negroes are not human it doesn't matter whether you believe us or not just watch their body language and watch what they are going to do and the idiocy of people like Nelly of Hebu and Simon Eber is enough proof so if you are somebody that believes Simon Eber we invite you to this place to tell us why you think he is saying the truth and he goes on to say everyone wants to do their bit to support those who have been forced to flee their homes because of the invasion never forget that there are millions of Nigerians that so called Negroes that are in internally displaced people's camps in Nigeria to today do they talk about it the answer is no that should tell you all you need to know and he goes on for that to encourage the people to donate to help those people whereas in the case of biafra this same government these same people you are looking at imposed an air land and sea blockade over biafra what does that tell you above all have they issued a statement on the nandekano what is his crime when you begin to see these things then your emancipation from mental slavery would have started and in the event you think we are joking or there is something we are telling you here that is propaganda or lies just bear in mind that the descendants of the slave hunters will not even allow you to offer support or help to the victims of their killings so ideally if you had some money let's assume you had some lose one million dollars now and you approached the so-called Nigerian government controlled by the slave master the British that you wanted to rebuild some of the houses they burnt in Olo or in Obibo or anywhere in, in the south they will never allow you and if they allowed you after watching this video then they would have planned to kill you it doesn't matter whether you believe us or not give it a try you can't even call for the charity to help those people if you did it they will arrest you and kill you and to better understand what we're saying here is a typical descendant of the slave hunters this is El Rufai, governor of Kaduna he is a Fulani and a descendant of the slave hunters here is where the Tinubu from Lagos visited him and donated 50 million to the victims we want you to take note of that because you are going to tell us is it not the same thing you are talking about remember this is for only northerners they will never do it to the south and this money may not even get to any of those people because the killings are done by the descendants of the slave hunters and they are supported by the slave master and his accomplices that is in europe and america if you doubt us that they will not allow charity to come in the same thing they did during the war remember yes it is the british that is sponsoring them but then they still have that in them because when they came to stop the slave trade the Fulanis did not agree they said their economy was based on it so if you doubt us conduct your research put it in the comment section to say this is where you people lied